So hello, this is John Yates, and I chair the technology practice at the law firm of Morris, Manning, and Martin. And I'm pleased today to have the co-founders of Premedics, Van Willis, the CEO, and Jim Bowling, COO. Premedics is an exciting healthcare company. And maybe to start things out, Van, tell us how Premedics was founded and how you and Jim got together. Yeah, great. Well, thanks for having us, John, and glad to be here. We, uh, Jim and I, got together about uh, 10 years ago at a, uh, a mutual friend's birthday party and started talking about uh, our careers. And Jim caught me up to date after 20 years of not seeing him and, and advised me that he'd been in the retail analytics space and trying to understand buyer consumer behavior and how to get them to do the things that uh, the retail stores want them to do. And I said, what, do you, what have you been doing, Van? And I said, well, I've been working in, in communications and most recently the, uh, it's been a, a period of 10 years in healthcare communications trying to, to talk with patients and ironically enough, trying to get them to do what they need to do to be healthier. So uh, we had a great conversation at this birthday party and reconnected shortly thereafter and said, you know, we, we have so much data in healthcare between these new EMR systems that were being rolled out at that time, as well as um, billing systems. There's so much data in healthcare and it's really not leveraged, Jim. And it sounds like you're using kind of cash register data that we called it back then and trying to understand what, what are these consumers doing and what do we want them to do? What if we blend these two worlds? I feel like we've got uh, expertise in both areas. I know how to communicate or engage with a patient. If we can also build the models on who do we target and what do we engage them with, we might have something that's going to be useful as healthcare had already started to really spiral out of control on the expense side and the hint at value-based care was there even, you know, those eight years ago and really we're just now getting there. So that was the genesis of Premedics. We came together with, with separate backgrounds and skill sets to, um, to form Premedics service. So it's been great. It's a great story. Interesting how those two disciplines came together to allow you to create the company. So, Jim, give us the elevator pitch. What's Premedics today in 2020? Well, usually Van's better at giving the elevator pitch, but I'll, I'll do my best and let Van fill in. We are, as Van mentioned, a technology-enabled service provider. We focus on patient engagement solutions. And what we've done is we built a, a CRM platform for healthcare, and it's some, taken a page out of the playbook for retail analytics and, and big pharma analytics and some other industries that do a lot more in terms of data-driven communications. And so we built a platform that helps our clients drive patient loyalty, patient acquisition and retention, as well as outcomes. And so their EMR platforms really are not designed to engage patients and to provide a single view of an engagement and to manage multi-channel patient communications. And so we built the technology to ingest data from different platforms, segment out through our decision analytics engine into our platform and into our campaigns that drive the, the cadence and the frequency and messaging as well as the type of communication, whether that's through a live communication, an automated text message, and other formats. And so we gather all that data. We then escalate if we come across a, an issue that's a clinical or a service-related issue, we escalate that back to the appropriate folks. And then we can intervene quickly, whether that's our team or the hospital or, or, or other provider team, office team, we can all get engaged in the patient at the right time and, and really make a difference. And that is helping to drive both satisfaction as well as quality and, and outcomes. So it's very timely right now as we shift more into revenue-driven programs for hospitals and practices. And, and there are a lot of new billable codes that we can help to support around patient engagement. That's great. So Walk us through maybe the differentiation. What premedics positions itself in a way to be different from others? And you've sort of highlighted that, but maybe Van, you can pick up on that concept and highlight the differences and, and the competitive advantage you have. 
Yeah, so there definitely, there's a lot of noise in healthcare. It's been a great space to operate in. So lots of companies doing a lot of different things in the space and, and many, and rightly so, understandable, take a pure tech approach. So think of the, the thousands of apps that have been developed just in the past two or three years. And, um, you know, the JP Morgan conference, I, I Always sticks in my mind some gentleman writes notes from the plane after the JP Morgan conference and last or year before last now, you know, talking about all the apps and, and where are they now? So many come and go. And our approach is a blend of, of technology and services. Healthcare is still human. And a lot of people don't want to be in that human side, but that's where there's great needs in health systems. If, if you ask anybody, could you use more support staff, clinical staff, whatever, you know, there's not a hand in the room that wouldn't go up. They're all undermanned. So what we've done is we've taken a technology to optimize workflows and processes and communications. But we also, what differentiates us is we haven't been scared to also supplement that with some services. At Athena, as an example, a lot of people know the Athena story. It looks like a technology. The back office is tremendous. All the mail that's being sorted, the uh, EOBs, all, all the paperwork. So we're, we're taking as much as we can. And the more we can take, the more we can automate and do smarter. But we can also supplement these teams that are not scalable enough in the hospital. So, you know, how do you stay connected to your patient now? and understand what they're doing or not doing in between their office visit or hospitalization. So we come in and we provide a solution that typically may take three, four, five vendors to accomplish. Hmm. So when you're looking at outcomes, you're looking at experience, you're looking at how do I get more staff recognition data? My teams are overworked right now with COVID in particular. How do I keep them going and driving forward? How do I also create that customer lo loyalty and also, you know, decrease our cost. So we've developed these campaigns on the platform that can have a return in all of these areas. So technology services and a solution that covers what typically multiple point solutions are needed for. An interesting combination and it really is vital in healthcare where you see so many different solutions that are disparate and ability to pull those together yeah, I, and I, with a common denominator that pre-medics provides is very unique. So let me shift into the current present COVID-19 world that we're in. I think we all believe that, uh, you know, what is today? It's July, July 8th. We thought it would be at least four or five months ago. We thought it might be over by now, but it looks like it may just be the first chapter, or at least the beginning chapters. What has that uh, been as far as impact on pre-medics? And Jim, maybe you can start out. And how do you see it continue to impact the way pre-medics grows if COVID-19 you know, hangs around for a while, as is expected? Well, our clients have, have definitely been impacted. And when COVID-19 first kind of took hold and when we were reacting to that situation, we thought that it was going to be a, an uptick in business, but it was the opposite. With elective surgeries being canceled, our clients' revenues really took a nosedive and their, their, their census went way down. So our patient engagement volume went down drastically, almost about 70% from the prior periods, prior months. And so we definitely had to make some adjustments around that as a company to help support our clients and to also continue our operations. So it was definitely challenging for us. It's now rebounding and we're up to about 80 to 90 percent of the pre-COVID volume. So um, it is looking very good now. And so from a business standpoint and, and supporting our clients, communications is now more important than ever. And uh, helping to manage patient recovery, post-discharge and into the care continuum is now more important than ever. And giving them a way to engage with their physicians and with other care providers through a virtual type of format is extremely important. So we have been really focused on the, that transitional care, communication, post-discharge, and then onboarding patients into remote monitoring programs and telehealth programs. So where we can uh, stay in touch with patients, give them the support they need without having them come into the office and potentially exposing them 
but also giving the providers a new revenue opportunity. And that's been something that's been a real lifeline to our provider clients as they've been looking for ways to generate revenue to offset the, the losses that they've seen. Very interesting. I think we're, we're uh, you know, it's, it's an unknown out there right now, but it's interesting how you uh, saw the initial impact uh, almost from a hibernation of op- a business and then how it's, how it's come back and grown. So maybe as a final question, as far as your growth goes, looking into 2021, I'm just wondering the challenges in forecasting into the new year. I mean, forecasting is always challenging in any instance, but it's been an interesting question to just think about as a technology company is, you know, how do you look beyond COVID-19 and think about where 2021 and 2022 are? Just any observations on that, Van or Jim, about the what you're doing to think it through and, and how you uh, are planning now? Well, I'll start and just say that it's definitely shaped our our planning moving forward. We are very quickly thrust into these revenue generating opportunities where just months ago we were equally, if not more heavily weighted in cost avoidance types of uh, or penalty avoidance types of programs like HCAPs and, and readmissions penalties. Now we're really driving revenue with the same programs, but it does take a different twist on our go to market messaging. So as we look into 2021, 2022, we're, we're really going to be focused on, on revenue driving programs that can also deliver those cost savings. And so that's really exciting for us. I think as we look to scale our business and provide more comprehensive revenue driving programs moving forward, I think would be the, the greatest uh, change in terms of our business and strategy moving forward. Yeah, you know, there's going to always be that revenue revenue savings and basically expense savings and coordination element that you guys play at Premedics. It's, I think it's going to get more complicated as we look at the various solutions that healthcare providers have and having someone that has the, the ability to create a common denominator as Premedics does in both services and product is really valuable. Well, we appreciate very much your time, Jim and Van, and congratulations on what you built. It, uh, it's great to hear a story about how a company started you know, early on at a birthday party and spans from there, <laughs> a very successful business. And uh, we proud to work with you and look forward to a successful second half a year for Premedics and a, and a bright future. Great. Thank you, John. Great. Thank you so much for having us on today. Uh, we appreciate it.